In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make one of these. It's a super easy build, and I wasn't really considering making a standalone video just for this, but the past two times I've posted videos using um, one of these guys on Instagram, people really seem to dig it. Like millions of views dig it. So here's how you can build one of your own amplified motor boxes. So it has this simple motor and fan on it with a prefab speed control circuit inside. And under the motor platform is a contact microphone. And in this case, it's one of these pre-made ones that you can find online. If you watched the first episode of my contact mic series, you'll understand what I mean when I say that um, even though there's two piezo discs here, they wired this as an unbalanced connection. So while the signal's a little weaker than if it were balanced, this is one of those uses where an unbalanced mic is perfectly okay. So besides this contact mic, the parts that you need are one of these prefab motor control circuits. And these are super simple to use with little ports on the back for connecting your power and your motor. For power, you can use one of these battery holders for two AA batteries. And this is all the power that you need to drive this little motor, which is one of these basic hobby motors. If you search for hobby motor online, this is the one that usually pops up. I like to add one of these propellers onto the motor too. I found that it adds a bit of drag and helps to give a tad more oomph to the sound that the motor makes. And these here are pretty common holders specifically for this type of motor. All of these parts will be listed in the description of the Patreon video below. I made this box specifically for this purpose, so I measured it out so everything fit just right. But there's really nothing special about this particular size or construction. You can use a shoebox or get a cigar box from a tobacco store or one of those prefab boxes that art stores sell. Now if you do want to use this exact type of box, I put a document below in the Patreon description that has all the layouts that you need. With thin wood like this, it's easy to cut all the pieces out by hand carefully with a box cutter. And if you do that, you don't need to cut these notches out. It's really easy to make these on a laser, but not so easy by hand. So this piece here has a hole that is specifically for the speed control. And this one has a hole that is for the output of the contact mic. Now I start with these two pieces and I glue them together. These go under the battery holder and makes it just a little easier to access the batteries. If I had a thicker piece of wood here, I'd probably just use a single piece. So I put that aside to dry and move on. So now I'm gonna glue all the sides together and I'm making sure that the output hole is towards the rear of the box. Otherwise it won't have room to clear the motor control circuit board. And for this lightweight box, hot glue is a fast drying option for construction and that's what I used. Once it's all together, I added the motor controller to the box. And with bigger builds, I usually put support underneath these, but it's such a lightweight part that I feel okay just letting it float in the box. Now with everything that you attach here, it's important for it to be fully tightened or glued down because anything that rattles on the box will be picked up by the contact mic. Now I glued down the wood piece that goes under the battery holder and I fastened the battery holder onto it using these little screws. And now it's time to put the motor platform on. At this point I realized I didn't account for the wires that need to go through the lid from the motor, so I drilled a small hole for them to fit through. Then I attached the motor holder on. And by the way, just saying that took me five attempts. Now to make sure it's secured tight and doesn't rattle, I used some hot glue and I screwed it into place. Then I glued this platform onto the box. And now it's time to install the contact mic. The discs have these sticky backs, so it's easy to attach them under the motor platform like this. Now with them attached, you can place the output jack into its spot. Again, make sure that it is tightened super tight so nothing rattles. And now we need to attach the power and the motor to the circuit board. Now the guide for which wire needs to go where is under the bottom of the circuit board, which is a little annoying, but there it is. So using that guide, 
I hook up the motor and power, making sure to get the positive and ground wires in the right spots. So now with everything wired, the motor will turn on and speed up when you turn the knob. So I made the lid this inlay type lid that doesn't require screws to hold on. And for the final touches, the fan gets pushed onto the motor shaft. And I chose this knob from my collection to use here. And just so you know, usually when you buy one of these motor control boards, they come with their own knob. And there you go. Now in order for this little guy to be worth showing off, it really needs to be run through some effects. Here's the effect chain that I used in those Instagram videos. I hope you have fun messing around with your amplified motor box. If you do make one, let me know in the comments. And if you want the list of all the parts that I use for this, that's gonna be on the Patreon version of this video. I've linked to that in the description. And I'll also be posting long sound clips of this running through all kinds of effects. So join me over on Patreon and I'll see you there.